Hello, today we're going to talk about using the visual arts in social studies and we're going to do that through America at the turn of the century. So the video overview, we're going to go over the social studies standards for this lesson and then we're going to go over the visual arts standards for this lesson. Then we're going to talk about using the visual arts in social studies and what that looks like. I'm going to give you a description of the lesson and then we're going to talk about some ways that you can differentiate using the visual arts in social studies. And then I have a painting example and then references. So the social studies standards. So we're going to use describe how life changed in America at the turn of the century. And the element that we're going to use is describe the impact on American life of the Wright brothers, George Washington Carver, Alexander Graham Bell, and Thomas Edison. The visual art standards that we're going to use, the first one is creates artwork based on personal experience and selected themes. And then the second is understands and applies media techniques and processes of two-dimensional art processes using tools and materials in a safe and appropriate manner to develop skills. So the visual arts and social studies. So using the visual arts and social studies allows for students to show what they know and what they understand through a non-traditional method. So rather than using paper, pencil, or um, a quiz or a multiple choice test, the students can use the arts to be creative to show their understanding. The students get to create a tangible product that demonstrates their understanding. So something that you can actually hold and they, they get to produce. The students can access other forms of intelligence, such as visual spatial intelligence. And then English language learners really benefit from incorporating the visual arts into social studies. So, you know, you may have an English language learner who is having a, a tough time expressing themselves with their words, but they understand the content well. So by incorporating the visual arts, they can show you what they know through their artwork. So the five elements of incorporating art into social studies. So the first one is, of course, you want to choose the standards that you want to cover and what you want the students to know. And then you want to select your art standards. So you don't want to just say, well, we're going to paint today in social studies. You want to be very specific about the art standards that you are using because you want your students to know what the purpose of the lesson is. And then you want to create objectives for your lesson. You want your students to understand why are we using art in social studies and to learn what. And then you want to provide students with the resources and materials that they need to understand the social studies content. And then create some type of assessment that covers both the social studies and the art standards. Because once again, we are incorporating art into social studies. So you want the art portion to have some weight. So that's why you want to incorporate the art portion into the assessment. So the lesson description. So you're going to provide the students with the resources that they need to understand the turn of the century. And then you're going to let them know that they're going to create an image using different types of materials to show what they know. So for this lesson, you're going to have the students decide which element of the standard that they want to work on. So you've covered um, the content and then you're going to have them dive deeper into it. So for this example, we're going to use um, Thomas Edison. And then you want the students to decide how they want to work with art. So you need to let the students know that they're going to have to do some research on their topic because they're going to have to create an image using what they have learned. And so for this lesson, we're going to either use pastels, watercolor, tempera paint, or charcoal. I would not recommend acrylic paint because that does not come out of clothes. Um, and then you let the children decide which one they want to use so you give them the choices and I chose these because these are materials that the students don't use on a day-to-day -day basis we use markers we use crayons we use colored pencils but we don't pull out the watercolors every day or the temper paint or pastels so then you want to let the students know that you want them to be detailed in their artwork. You're not looking for them to be an artist, but you want their work to be appropriate 
Okay, and then you want to let the students know that as they're doing their research to find keywords that they would like to incorporate into their artwork. So for example, since I'm doing Thomas Edison, I want a light bulb, of course, a camera, I want a picture of Thomas Edison, and then maybe the word inventions. So you're going to review the art standards so that the students understand the purpose for incorporating art into social studies. And since art is an important part of this lesson, you want the students to understand that they are showing what they know through their product. And so they need to be thoughtful about what they create. And then once again, the work should be appropriate. You want to give those students high expectations so that they understand that they need to take their time and they really need to put effort into their artwork. So some ways to differentiate. So, of course, students, you can allow them to work at their own ability level. If you're using watercolor, there may be a student who's never worked with watercolor. So theirs may look different than someone who's worked with watercolor several times. So you're, you're allowing them to have this new medium and they're exploring and creating their artwork. Um, you can also, of course, let them decide. So one student might choose charcoal, but then you have another student who chooses pastel because you know there's some texture um, issues may be there and then you can let the students decide what they want to create to demonstrate their understanding one student might only show the inventions of Thomas Edison but then another student might show him in a particular setting so like I said you can let the students decide how they show what they know so here it is an example of a performance-based assessment so for this one, it would just be a checklist. So um, like I said before, you want to make sure that art is present in the assessment. And so this you could just check off. Is it present in the artwork or is it not? Um, and then, of course, one of the components are, did I put forth full effort? Because that's important here. You want the students to take care and take time in their artwork. So here's a painting example. And the reason why I wanted to show this example is clearly I am not an artist, but I did my painting to the best of my ability. You can clearly see my light bulb. You can tell I have Thomas Edison there. You um, can see that I, you know, took my time to, to create my inventions on my painting. Okay, so I would show an example so that the students know what to expect. And then I used this article, Creating Connections, Integrating the Visual Arts and Social Studies. Um, this is a peer-reviewed article that I found this idea of incorporating art into social studies. Thank you.